All right, thank you. We're going to go to Senator Santorum next. Okay, yes, you can. In, in the, this is exactly what I'm trying to illustrate. We need to have a president of the United States who stands firm on their convictions. This is what I have demonstrated for every day that I have been in Congress. I have a consistent record of standing on my convictions. I didn't cut deals with special interests where you put the pro-life issue together with tax increase issues. That's a fundamental. It's a non-negotiable. And when we come to a non-negotiable, we must stand, and I stand. Governor, we're going to come back around. Just, just very quickly, her, her answer is illogical. If, her answer is illogical. If there were two bad things in the bill, a tax increase and we were hypothetically stripping away pro-life protections, which we weren't, then it's a double reason to vote against it. She voted for it. I need to respond okay. to we, that. We have other I, people I, I here. I need to respond to that. Yep. Because I need to respond to that. Michelle, 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 this, Michelle I understand. There's some people over here. There's I understand. You have the next question. To say you have lot. the next question, uh, Senator. <laughs> I promise. Congresswoman Bachman, 15 seconds, okay? This is what I want to say. If a person, if a member cast a vote one way, they would be increasing the cigarette tax. If they cast a vote another way, they would not be voting for the pro-life protection. It was a choice. The governor put us in that box, and I chose to protect human life. Okay, we'll come back around later. Byron. All right, next we're going to Senator Santorum. Yes, we are. <laughs> You'd see me in your, in your hometown, but you probably wouldn't see much of me on television, so it's holding true tonight. <laughs> well, Senator, here you are. The deficit-cutting supercommittee is now getting to work. Democrats will demand that savings come from a combination of spending cuts and tax increases, maybe $3 in cuts for every $1 in higher taxes. Is there any ratio of cuts to taxes that you would accept, 3 to 1, 4 to 1, or even 10 to 1? No, the answer is no, because that's not the problem. The problem is that we have spending that has exploded. Mm -hmm. Government has averaged 18 percent of GDP as, as the percentage of the overall economy that government eats up, and we're now at almost 25 percent. Uh, revenues are down about 2 or 3 percent. So if you look at where the problem is, the problem is in uh, spending, not taxes. And we'll get those taxes up if we grow the economy. I put forth a plan to grow the economy, and I've provided leadership in the past to get bipartisan things done. You know, I, I, I sympathize with M Michelle Bachman, who stands up and says, I'm going to stand firm on these things. You need to stand firm on these things, but you can't stand and say, you give me everything I want or I'll vote no. You have to find the principles, like I did on welfare reform. I said three things to cut a federal entitlement, to end it. The three things we wanted to accomplish, end a federal entitlement, which we did. We wanted to require work, which we did. And we wanted to put a time limit on welfare. We did those three things. We compromised on everything else. I didn't get everything I wanted, but I got the core of what I wanted, and we transformed welfare. You need leaders. You need people who are good at leadership, not showmanship. But just confirming, Senator, you would not negotiate on raising taxes. Absolutely not, because it's not the problem, and the Democrats know it's not the problem. This is where leadership comes in. You go out to the American public and you lay out the facts. I've been traveling around Iowa, and I lay out the facts to people, and they nod their heads, and they say, yeah, this makes sense. We need to get the economy growing. That doesn't mean taking more money out of it. That means, it means creating uh, energy jobs, creating manufacturing jobs, and my plan will do that. Well, I'm going to ask a question to everyone here on the stage. Say you had a deal a real spending cuts deal, 10 to 1, as, as Byron said, spending cuts to tax increases. Speaker, you're already shaking your head. But who on this stage would walk away from that deal? When you raise your hand, if you feel so strongly about not raising taxes, you'd walk away on the 10 to 1 deal. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, why are you shaking your head? I, th I think this is that not an important look, question. I think this super committee is about as dumb an idea as Washington has come up with in my lifetime. I mean, if, if you will for a second, I mean, I used to run the House Representatives. I have some general notion of these things. The idea that 523 senators and congressmen are going to sit around for four months while 12 brilliant people, mostly picked for political reasons, are going to sit in some room and brilliantly come up with a trillion dollars or force us to choose between gutting our military and accepting a tax increase is irrational. This, this, they're going to walk in just before Thanksgiving and say, all right, we can shoot you in the head or cut off your right leg. Which do you prefer? 
What they ought to do is scrap the committee right now, recognize it's a dumb idea, go back to regular legislative business, assign every subcommittee the task of finding savings, do it out in the open through regular legislative order, and get rid of this secret, phony business. Okay. Just making sure everyone at home and everyone here knows that they all raise their hands. They're all saying that they feel so strongly about not raising taxes that a 10 to 1 deal they would walk away from. Confirming that. Now to Chris Wallace with a round of questions on health care. Governor Paletti, you admit that you muffed a question in the last debate about Governor Romney's health care plan, so I'm going to give you another chance. You've said that the President's plan and the Romney plan are so similar that you call them both Obamacare. And you also said this, I don't think you can prosecute the political case against President Obama if you are a co-conspirator. Could you please tell Governor Romney, who's two down from you, what he and President Obama have conspired to do? Yeah, I don't want to miss that chance again, Chris. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, look, it, Obamacare was patterned after the MITS plan in Massachusetts. And for MIT or anyone else to say that there aren't substantial similarities or they're not essentially the same plan, it just is incredible. So that's why I called it Obamacare, and I think that's a fair label, and I'm happy to call it that again tonight. But that's not the only similarity between Governor Romney's record and President Obama's record. Again, if we're going to take him on, we have to contrast with him on other important issues. For example, in spending, I've got the best spending record, it took Minnesota's historic spending from highs to lows. Uh, Mitt ran up spending in his watch as governor 40 plus percent over his four years. That's not going to contrast very well with the president. In the area of judicial selections, the Boston Globe uh, said that two out of three or so of Mitt's judicial selections, judge selections, were either pro-choice, Democrat, or liberal. I appointed conservative, strict constructionists to my Supreme Court. So that we're going to have to take it to Barack Obama, and we're going to have to show contrast, not similarities. Go Governor Romney, I'm going to ask you a question about health care, but I'd like to give you 30 seconds to respond to the criticism of other parts of your record. I think I like Tim's answer at the last debate better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's some similarities be between what we did in Massachusetts and what uh, President Obama did, but there's some big differences. And one is, I believe in the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution. And that says that powers not specifically granted to the federal government are reserved by the states and the people. We put together a plan that was right for Massachusetts. The president took the power of the people and the states away from them and put in place a one-size-fits-all plan. It's bad law, it's bad constitutional law, it's bad medicine. And if I'm the president of the United States on my first day, I'll direct the secretary of HHS to grant a waiver from Obamacare to all 50 states. But, but Governor, and, and this, is, this is your one-minute question, do you think the government at any level has the right to make someone buy a good or service just because they are a U.S. resident. Where do you find that authority, that mandating authority, government making an individual buy a good or service in the Constitution? Chris, you're, you're asking me what do we think we should do about Obamacare, and the no, answer I'm, is... I'm asking you... And the answer, is, the answer is I think you have to repeal Obamacare, and I will, and I'll put in place a plan that allows states to craft their own programs to make those programs but, sir, work. I'm asking you and where do you find that authority me, in the Constitution? Let, let me tell you, uh, where do I find it in the Constitution? Are you familiar with the Massachusetts Constitution? I am. And the Massachusetts Constitution allows states, for instance, to say that our kids have to go to school. It has that power. The question is, is that a good idea or a bad idea? And I understand different people come to different conclusions. What we did in our state was this. We said, look, we're finding people that can afford insurance, health insurance, that are going to the hospital and getting the state to pay for them. Taxpayers are picking up hundreds of millions of dollars of cost from people who are free riders. We said, you know what, we're going to insist that those people who can afford to pay for themselves do so. We believe in personal responsibility. And if the people aren't willing to do that, then they're going to help the government pay for them. That was our conclusion. The right answer for every state is to determine what's right for those states and not to impose Obamacare on the nation. That's why I'll repeal it. Con Congresswoman Bachman, you are a big believer in the Tenth Amendment and the idea of granting power to the state. So let me ask you, does that make any difference? whether mandatory health insurance is being imposed by a state or by the federal government.
No, I don't believe that it does. I think that the government is without authority to compel a citizen to purchase a product or service against their will. Because effectively, when the federal government does that, what they're doing is they are saying to the individual they are going to set the price of what that product is. If the federal government can force American citizens, or if a state can force their citizens to purchase health insurance, there is nothing that the state cannot do. This is clearly an unconstitutional action, whether it's done at the federal level or whether it's the state level. And I will not rest as the President of the United States until we repeal Obamacare. And as the nominee of the Republican Party, I also will not rest until I can also elect an additional 13 senators who agree with me so we'll have a filibuster-proof Senate and we can actually repeal Obamacare. Care. Congressman Paul, you are a constitutional expert and you talk a lot about the Constitution. What do you think of this argument that the state has a constitutional right to make someone buy a good or service just because they're a resident, not because they're driving and need a driver's license, but just the fact that they are a resident? No, the way I would understand the Constitution, the federal government can't go in and prohibit the states from doing bad things. And I would consider that a very bad thing, but you don't send in a federal police force because they're doing it and throw them in a court. So they do have that leeway under our Constitution. But we have big trouble in this medical care problem, and uh, we have drifted so far from any of our care being delivered by the marketplace. And once you get the government involved, and both parties have done it, they've developed a, a bit of a, a uh, medical care delivery system based on corporatism. The corporations are doing quite well, whether it's Obama or under the Republican. The drug companies do well, the insurance companies do well, the organized medicine do well, organ, uh, the management companies do well. The patient and the doctor suffer. There's a wedge. Every time you hit the government, get in here with these regulations and have these mandates, there's a wedge driven in between the doctor and the patient. We have to get the people more control of their care, and that's why these medical savings accounts could at least introduce the notion of market delivery of medical care. Senator Santorum, Senator Santorum, I see you uh, running to jump in. Your thoughts well, about Romney care? First, I was the first author of medical savings accounts back in 1992 with John Kasich in the House. But this is, this is a very important argument here. This is the Tenth Amendment run amok. Michelle Bachman says that she would go in and fight health care being imposed by states, mandatory health, but she wouldn't go in and fight marriage being imposed by the states. That would be okay. We have Ron Paul saying, oh, he, what the states want to do, whatever the states want to do under the Tenth Amendment is fine. So if the states want to pass polygamy, that's fine. If the states want to impose sterilization, that's fine. No, our country is based on moral laws, ladies and gentlemen. There are things the states can't do. Abraham Lincoln said, the states do not have the right to do wrong. I respect the Tenth Amendment, but we are a nation that has values. We are a nation that was built on a moral enterprise, and states don't have the right to tramp over those because of the Tenth Amendment. When we come back, we're going to take a short break. We're going to talk about a couple of people who are not here tonight. Also, national security, foreign policy, the war on terror, and a bit later, social issues. Fired up crowd here. Check out foxnews.com and vote in our online poll. We'll be right back after this break. Fox News.